Hello, this is Bobby Newman, and I'd like to welcome you to this week's Research Minutes, the CIPRI Knowledge Hub's weekly podcast, where we interview researchers about the latest work being done in the field to help improve education. This week, I speak with Dr. Devin Carlson, Assistant Professor in the Department of Political Science at the University of Oklahoma, about his study, The Effect of English Language Learner Reclassification on Student ACT Scores, High School Graduation, and Post-Secondary Enrollment, a Regression Discontinuity Evidence from Wisconsin, which was published in the Journal of Policy Analysts and Management. Devin, thank you for joining me today. My pleasure. I'm glad to be here. The research that you and Jared Knowles conducted is very timely given that English language learners are the fastest growing population in schools today. Can you tell us a little bit about classification policies regarding English language learners? Sure. The The process of classifying, potentially classifying a student as an English learner starts um, with their enrollment in the school system. And in most states, at the time a student in, is enrolled in the system, they are um, assessed for potential EL status. And this assessment takes various forms across states, but in general, um, the first step is often administration of a home language survey, which assesses whether students are exposed to languages other than um, English at home. And if that survey indicates that they may be have such exposure, they're, they're typically administered uh, an English language proficiency screener, um, which, which assesses their proficiency in the English language and informs the assessment of whether the student should be classified as an English learner. And if they are, then they enter the school system with an English learner classification and they are eligible for the programs and services that districts provide um, to, to that group of students. And once a student is classified as an English learner, they are re their status is reassessed annually. Um, that reassessment can take various forms. It always includes the um, administration of an English language proficiency assessment, but it can also include um, consultations with teachers, parents, grades, um, their performance on content area assessments. And at the end of each year, a student is assessed as to whether they will remain classified as an English learner the following year. So what is the criteria these reclassifications policies are based on? So again, this, this, can vary, this does vary across states, but in general, it includes a student's performance on an English language proficiency assessment. And in a, a majority of states, 25 to 30 states, that is the access assessment. And um, states administer this test, this assessment, to all students classified as English learners, and their score on it informs whether they will be classified as an English learner the following year. Um, states typically give districts flexibility in considering other metrics. You know, districts can talk to teachers, they can consult with parents, they can look at students' grades. In in addition to um, assessing the student's score on the as access exam. But the reality is that in Wisconsin and many other states, the student's performance on the access exam is pivotal. One point can separate a student. There's a cut point on the access exam that separates proficiency from non-proficiency. And in most states and districts, students who score above that cut point are classified as fully English proficient, where students who score below that cut point remain classified as English learners. So, and that's where your study comes in. What did you discover in your research? So that is where our study comes in. We took advantage of the fact that there is this cut point that separates, one point separates students who score above it from students who score below it, and thus are classified as uh, fully English proficient or remain classified as English learners. And what we do is we compare the outcomes, the post-secondary outcomes of students who score above that point um, in their 10th, at the end of their 10th grade year and are thus reclassified as fully proficient starting their junior year in high school to the outcomes of students who score just below that cut point and remain classified as English language learners. And what we find is that students who score just above that cut point and who are classified as fully proficient, they score about one point higher on the ACT exam. We also find that they are more likely to enroll in post-secondary education the fall following their graduation from high school, with most of that effect attributable to increased enrollment at four-year colleges and universities. 
And so what we take this to mean is that we, we, we can't isolate the precise mechanism, but based on prior research and some talks with practitioners, um, my co-author Jared Knowles and I, we think that what might be happening is students who are reclassified as fully proficient might be exposed to a more college prep curriculum, to a set of English classes, uh, reading, you know, reading skills that better prepare them for the ACT. Um, I, I will note that the increased performance on the improved performance on the ACT we found is almost entirely attributable to improved performance on the reading and English portions of the assessment. Um, classification as fully proficient has no effect on the performance on the science or math parts of that assessment. So couldn't the increased post secondary enrollment been a consequence of higher ACT scores? Absolutely, and we, we explored that possibility. Um, we asked it, we performed an analysis where we controlled for students' ACT scores, and we found that um, there was still, an, even after you ad address the increased ACT score, students who were classified as fully English proficient were more likely to enroll in post-secondary education of the fall after they graduated. Um, we think that what could be happening, and this is an area that I think is ripe for future research, is that um, students who are classified as fully English proficient may receive more um, assistance from guidance counselors in, in identifying potential post-secondary options. Um, it may, it, basically, we think that these services may extend beyond the classroom to other services, assistance with um, financial aid, assistance with the application process that are targeted at students who are fully proficient and, and less targeted at students who remain classified as English language learners. So what policy implications does your research have for schools, districts, and states? So we think our research has some really important implications. Um, given the stark difference in ACT performance and post-secondary outcomes among students who perform almost identically on the access exam, we think it suggests that schools and districts should exercise more discretion, not just consider the access performance, but also think about the broader context in which the student is educated. How, how what do their teachers have to say? How do their grades look? Um, what do their parents think? All of those should inform the reclassification decision in our, in our opinion. With respect to states, we think states should encourage schools and districts to use this flexibility they are provided. Um, the access score is, is, is one important indicator of English proficiency, but it's not the sole indicator of English proficiency in our view. And we think that our results indicate that students who score just below that proficiency threshold, schools and districts might reconsider classifying those students as fully proficient, given the benefits with respect to ACT performance and post-secondary outcomes that, we've, that we saw in our analysis. Thanks, Devin. Thank you so much for sharing your research with us. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And thank you, audience, for listening to Research Minutes. To share your thoughts on this discussion, head to Cahill Conversations at cprehub.org. To subscribe to our weekly podcast and listen to more interviews, head to SoundCloud, CPRE, Knowledge Hub. For the latest videos, podcasts, and discussion updates, follow us at CPRE Hub on Twitter and at CPRE Hub on Facebook. We look forward to hearing from you. And thanks again for joining us today.